Saxon Algebra 1 half, lesson 60. Today is an exciting day, my students. We're going to start talking about circles. Circles are a very interesting shape in geometry, uh, along with triangles, which we've been discussing, but we're going to really dive into the geometry of circles today. We're going to start. This is going to go on for quite some time. Um, and the interesting thing about circles is that even though they're quite similar to polygons in the way that we think about them, they have some different words associated with them. So the first thing I want to do is teach you the words. Here's a circle. Pretend it's perfect. Okay. In a circle, we have a center. Always a center. Draw with me, please. The center is pretty e easy. Now, wrap your mind around this. From the circle to the edge, there are quite a lot of places where you could draw a line just like that, right? It goes from the center to the edge of the circle. And it's the same all the way around. Okay, no matter where you would choose to draw them, that distance is always the same. That is called the radius. It goes from the center to the edge. We're just calling it the edge of the circle right now. There's another word that's more precise, okay? So that is what the radius is. And the plural of radius is radii. I think that's how you spell it. Um, so that's a little word, but you, a little weird, but we don't say radiuses, okay? Now, if you want to create, I'm gonna use a different color so it's easier to see. If you wanna put take a pair of radii and connect them so that they form a straight line that goes through the center and all the way across, that's called a diameter. <coughs> Sorry, my light just fell, it was very exciting. I thought I was under attack. Let's see if I can get it to stand back up. Come on, little guy. Mm, he's fighting me. Come on, cooperate. I'll do it one-handed. Okay, the diameter goes straight across from edge to center to edge. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. Edge to center. Whoops to edge, and it makes a straight line. And one diameter equals two radius is radii. Okay, that makes sense, right? As you can see it, there's a radius and there's a radius. They're connected in a straight line so we can call them a diameter, but we can also look at them separately and see, oh yeah, that actually makes sense as a uh, pair of radiuses as well, right? Okay, there's one more piece to this. I'm still holding the lamp with my hand so I have to do everything one-handed now. I will complete this lesson while holding the lamp with one hand. That's how dedicated I am, you guys, to the fine art of circles. All right. The edge of a circle we would think is called the perimeter, right? But it's not. For reasons that only have to do with the ancient Greeks, this is called the circumference. Okay, and I'm going to draw it as if it were actually outside the edge of the circle. But it's actually the very same, right? I just don't want to put the lines over the top of each other. This is exactly the same idea of what we call of the perimeter when we're dealing with polygons, which are straight-sided shapes. But for whatever reason, we use a different name when we are talking about circles. We don't say perimeter, we say circumference. The reason is because there were a lot of ancient people that studied circles and they developed their own set of words. That's why uh, we don't necessarily use the same language as we did for, we do for polygons. That was like a different group of people that were obsessed with them. 
Um, but here's what the ancient people were obsessed with. They're mostly ancient Greeks. The, the Egyptians were in on it too, I believe. They noticed that there's always a relationship between the diameter and the circumference. What they noticed is that for any circle, if you take the, I'm gonna mix my colors again, because A, I can. If this is the length of the diameter, I'm just guessing, it will go around the circle, the diameter, goes around the, let's say circumference, because that's the specific word, right? Circumference exactly 3.14 dot, 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 dot times. I'll explain that dot, dot, dot for you. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's a big circle or a tiny circle or uh, any size in between, whatever your diameter is, and let me draw the diameter again. That's the diameter, right? And here I show it going around one time, two times, three times, and a little bit more. That's the 3.14, okay? And they noticed it's always the same. What they noticed though is that this number is a lot longer than 3.14. In fact, it has infinite repeating digits. But they recognize that this number in itself is really important. And they gave it a name. In fact, they gave it a name that is a Greek letter. It looks like this, and it's pronounced pi, okay? You say it just as if it was a slice of apple, right? This number is the magic number that always relates the length of the diameter to the length of the circumference, okay? So that's really cool. And what we do is we can use that for a formula that we're gonna use a whole bunch. And I'm gonna write it down for you, but we're gonna write it down a whole lot of times. The circumference is equal to pi, 3.14, and we use it in the formula like that, times the diameter, right? And this picture shows you exactly what this formula means. If you take the length of the diameter and wrap it around the circumference of the circle, it'll go three times plus a little bit more, the 0 0.14, right? And so this is how we write that as a formula. Circumference equals the diameter times pi, 3.14. Now, because we already said that the diameter is equal to two times the radius, we can also write this like so, where two times r equals the diameter. Don't ask me why, you guys, but I've just memorized it in this order. Two pi r. You could think of it as pi times two r, right? If that makes more sense to you. These are two ways of saying the exact same thing. The order that we put these in doesn't matter. This is just how my brain memorized it back in, I don't know, whatever grade I learned this in. But this, this, and this are all the same thing. We have to memorize that. You have to, have to, have to, promise me. It'll make your life so much better. This picture helps you understand how this 3.4 thing works. This is the formula that memorizes it, okay? So this is for circumference, the outside edge. That's what this trio they're like identical triplets, you guys. They're not, they're not different formulas. They're just different forms of the same thing. We're gonna use this one or this one a lot because we very often talk about the radius rather than the diameter, all right? So this will be the more familiar one that we use. Honestly, I put a star by it because that's the way I've memorized it. That's the one I'm gonna use the most. Write all three inside the cover of your book right now and write circumference by it, because I'm gonna give you another formula in just a minute. Also write that 3.14 is how we round pi, and write that that's how you say it. It's a Greek letter, and it's got this curving top and the two lines straight down. Okay, you do that, I'm gonna flip the page.
Okay. Pause me if you need more time. Um, okay, so this is what we covered on the last page, that the circumference is equal to 2 pi r, and that pi is roughly equal. That's what that little means it over an equal sign is it means it's approximately equal to 3.14. All right, that's the value we're going to use through all of high school. When I went to college, I had to use it to four digits, 3.1416, but we don't need to do that. Life is short. High school is easier. Okay, the other, this is circumference, right? C equals circumference, and that means the outside edge. I don't have as easy to understand a diagram as the one I showed you back here with the, the string going around. So this one you just have to trust me on. If we want to find the area of the circle, which means this inside space, right? Just like the area of a rectangle or a triangle. If we want to find the area, we'd multiply pi times the radius squared. We have to square the radius, okay? Um, and everyone forever in their life always confuses these two formulas. So I'm gonna tell you right now how to keep it straight. This one is two pi r, this one is pi r squared. That's really confusing because they all have a pi in them, they all have an r in them, and they all have a two in them. However, in this formula, the two is a square. And that's important because it's an exponent because area is a two-dimensional measure, right? Area means length and width. So you need to have the square in there because area is two-dimensional. Circumference is one-dimensional, so we don't need to have a square in this formula. We can just use the radius. Basically, there's an invisible one there. We don't have to write it, okay? So that is my trick for having, helping you remember that the area gets the square and the circumference has just the plain R, all right? The other thing I wanna tell you right off the bat is that sometimes I use a uppercase and sometimes I use a lowercase. Doesn't make any difference, it both means radius. Okay, don't let me confuse you on that. It's all the same, okay? Let's try a problem. There's only one and it has three parts. Example 60.1. P.S. We're going to be using these. Oh my goodness. For such a time. What is, okay. The radius of a circle is five centimeters. So I'm going to write R equals five. Now I chose to use a lowercase r. That is my go-to. I usually use lowercase. So tell your spirit animals not to be freaked out. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. It's, it, they both mean radius. All right. A asks, what is the circumference of the circle? All right, so the first thing I do is I write down my formula. C equals 2 pi r. That's my formula that I have memorized. And now I start filling in the blanks for those two letters. C equals 2 times pi. I know that's 3.14. And then the radius in this case is 5. Okay? So that's how we fill in those blanks. Pi is always equal to 3.14. For our purposes, we call it equal. Again, I could do it this way too. Um, that's less correct. It's better to have it this way, I think. Um, but in any case, we plug in and we get this. Now, at first, you want to cry because when we use pi, a lot of times we have drama in our multiplication. But this is not one of those times because look, 5 times 2 is 10. So it's the same as 10 times 3.14. And now all I have to do, multiplying by 10 is the same as jumping the decimal. So I can say that the circumference of this circle is 331.4, and now I just need a unit. And I look back at my problem, it's centimeters. And I remember that circumference is a measure of length. It is one dimensional, and so I don't need to put a square on my unit either. Okay, B asks, what is the area of this same circle? So there's our radius. I get my area formula. Area equals pi r squared. Lowercase r, don't let it throw you. Now, sometimes 
There are two ways to approach these problems. Sometimes we want our answer all the way multiplied through, and sometimes John says, it's okay, you don't have to multiply by pi. So I will show you both steps. Here's what I would do first. First, I would square, the, well, let me plug it in first. Right, there's plugging in five equals the radius. Now, now I'll show you what I'm talking about. First, I would say, well, let's square this. It's 25 pi. That, in some cases, is a perfectly good answer because what we're saying is we know we need to multiply it by 3.14, but we just don't have time for that today. Sometimes John will show an answer like this, and I'm 100% fine with that. Other times he will multiply it through, and here's the thing, it's not that hard. 3.14 is pretty easy to multiply by because those are easy times tables. Most people know those well. So let's just multiply it through. Five times four. I'm gonna be quiet and let you multiply and check your work against me. Okay, so I've multiplied everything. Make sure you got the same as me. I'll give you a second to check and fix. Now we add. Right, this is where we add, that's where we multiply. And then remember our last step is we look at how many places were behind the decimal in the original problem and we put the same number of decimal places into our answer. So the area of this imaginary circle. We haven't seen a picture of it. Doesn't matter. It's got a radius of five. The area is 78.5. And again, we need a unit. And area is always squared. So we have to square our unit. Okay, we've already squared it in our calculation right there. When we squared the five and went to 25, that's how we took care of the squaring in our calculation. But there it is in our answer. These are both right. Yay! We now know how to do basic geometry of circles. Feel smart. This is a big step. Knowing pi definitely puts you into the algebra club. Okay, that's all for lesson 60. You got it. Thank you. Goodbye.